All right, hey there, fellow coder. Welcome to this next episode in our series where we are building a real-world Java web, web application from scratch, uh, mostly leveraging the Spring Boot and family type technology. So uh, in this uh, or less, lesson, rather, tutorial, video, whatever you want to call it, uh, we are actually going to do something uh, a little bit more fun, if you will, than we, than we have been doing. Uh, first, I'm going to delete this code because it's all commented out. Uh, we are going to actually uh, create a user registration screen. So um, right now, if you run our application and you go and you log into our application, Go to localhost 8080 dashboard. It will redirect you to the login screen. You'll need to type in your password um, and log in. And there you go. You can see the, the dashboard. The issue here is you need to have already had a, a username and password created, right? So we need to have a way for someone to create an account. So right now there's only a login button. So we should probably have a button that says create account. Um, and then we can go in and um, wire up and, and, and create the uh, account creation screen. So we'll see how far we can get in this episode, but it'll probably take a couple episodes before we get to the finished product there. Uh, so first things first, let's add a another button to our login screen. So, and another thing is, yes, I realize the login screen is ugly. Um, we will be making this pretty, uh, but you know, there's only so many things you can get accomplished in, in uh, these videos. So uh, we will get there when we get there. So first thing I wanna do is we'll add a button. So here we'll say a new div because right here we have a submit BTN class. Uh, right now, what I will do is this won't be a submit because this will be a type of button because we don't want it to actually submit the form uh, that this button is inside of because it's actually wrapped inside of a form. So the button is here. Uh, and we want the button to, uh, you know, say create account. So the first thing I want to make sure of is that the button uh, being what it is, does not submit the form to, to try to like log in or anything like that, right? So right now we just created a button. Uh, so if we refresh the screen, we'll see create account. Uh, I actually, I put it in another div, which means it'll be on, on a different line. I actually, I don't want that. I want that to be on the same line. So I'm gonna move that button up and get rid of the div that I just created. Um, so they're gonna be side by side. Uh, and obviously they're a bit too close to each other, but again, th this is the look and feel stuff that we'll get to uh, a little bit later. But right now what I wanna do is I wanna click on create account and make sure it doesn't submit the form. So when I click on it, nothing should happen. Good, so that's what I want. I want it to not submit the form because when I click on log in is when I want it to submit the form and it just did and it failed to log in because I don't have the right password. So uh, the reason why it did nothing was because it's a type of button and not type of submit. Okay, so now we need to do something with this button to actually have it, uh, well, like I said, do something. And there's a whole bunch of different things, uh, ways that you can accomplish this. Um, and uh, I think what we're gonna do uh, with this application is, I think I'm gonna leverage jQuery. And you know, jQuery, some people will criticize it and say that it's, it's an old technology now. And that's, you know, for the most part, that's true. It is a bit older. Um, but the reason why I'm, I'm going to use it for this project um, is because there's a lot, a lot of legacy um, jobs out there. A lot of jobs that exist require the knowledge of jQuery because jQuery has been so popular and still continues to be pop popular. Um, I've even used it to build new applications. So uh, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable with it. So I tend to use it for new applications um, and many, many corporations out there use it. So it's just good to know you're, you're going to, if you know jQuery, um, you're go it's gonna open up a lot of opportunity for you out there um, with existing uh, companies and whatnot. So that's why I'm gonna use it. Uh, but the caveat there is, yes, it's getting a bit older um, and it's getting a little bit out of date. So um, the, you know, to use it, to consider using it going forward all the time, I wouldn't consider using it all the time. There are new technologies out there like, um, uh, oh geez, uh, Vue.js, there's Angular, Angular's very, very big. Um, there's React, which is a bit smaller in terms of the uh, learning curve and whatnot. Um, so there's there's other front end technologies that can be used or just plain old JavaScript. You can continue to use plain old JavaScript uh, with all the uh, additions to the JavaScript language. It's actually, it can do pretty much everything that jQuery can do just out of the box. So really, if you ask me, I think plain old native JavaScript um, should probably be the way that you go in my opinion. But anyway, that's, this, there's a, that's a whole nother series all on its own.
But for now, the reason why I'm using jQuery is because it's going to benefit you uh, based on careers. Because I know a lot of you are doing this to get a, to have a career. So a lot of, like I said, companies require the use of, of jQuery. So jQuery, what is it? It is a JavaScript library. It allows you to um, uh, write JavaScript code that, you know, write it once and run it anywhere in terms of any browser. It is cross browser compatible with Chrome, Edge, Firefox, IE, Safari, Android, iOS, and more. Um, so it's, yeah, it's very, it's very nice because you write the code once and it'll run, it, it will have the same experience across all the browsers. So uh, basically, how do I implement uh, jQuery on my page? Well, usually I don't want to download it. I want to, usually I, I use a CDN, a content distribution network. Um, so I guess I should type in jQuery CDN. Uh, here you go, code.jQuery.com. That's where you go. So I'm going to use the slim minified version. So slim means it doesn't, it, it, it's a far reduced footprint. It's a far, um, it, it's sort of bare bones, if you will, in terms of what you get out of jQuery. Uh, and the minified just means it's it's a um, uh, smaller file size. There's, there's no line breaks in the code and everything. Anyway, uh, it's just a, a smaller, even smaller footprint. So I'm going to copy this slim version and I'm going to paste it into my head into the head section um, of my uh, login screen here so now that'll allow me to leverage jQuery code so now I can use jQuery and basically what I'm using jQuery for is I'm going to have another script um, that at some point I will externalize um, type equals text JavaScript and I'm going to have this code uh, bring in uh, the jQuery initializing function. So what this is, is this says um, when the web application has loaded and when we're ready and everything's done and good to go, um, then we can execute our jQuery code, right? So you need to do this for jQuery because it, like I said, it's saying don't execute this code inside of the scope of this function. There's a function right here. Don't execute this function um, until everything is ready, the page is loaded, okay? If you do not have this in here, your jQuery code won't work properly because it's it's not it's just not gonna work because the page hasn't loaded yet. So here I will use selectors. So this comes from CSS. Uh, selectors in CSS is, um, is very popular. And that's another reason why learning jQuery is kind of good too because you're le learning uh, other concepts as well like in like selectors in CSS. So jQuery uses uh, selectors to say, hey, first I want to select an object or uh, uh, an element on the screen on the HTML page. I want to select an object or a, a bunch of objects. Uh, I keep saying objects, um, elements. I'm so used to talking in, in Java world. Um, select elements or an element on the page and do something with it. So in this case, the element that we want to be um, uh, interested in or that we are interested in is this button. So how can we select just this button to say, hey, when this button is clicked, I want you to do something. Well, right now there's no great way to individually select it, so we need to insert that way. We need to give it an ID. And the ID has to be unique for the page. We'll call this create account is the ID we will set. And now we have a way to uniquely identify this button to be able to do something with it. So the selector that we're gonna use with jQuery is uh, the um, hashtag here, the pound symbol, which means select by ID, okay? And the ID that we want to select by is create account. So what this does is this grabs the create account button that we have uh, added and it allows us to do something with it, right? So we can say dot click. So when we click on this create account button, what should we do? Well, we're gonna execute a function, okay? And what should this function do? So when we click on the button, what should happen? Well, we should just have it go to, um, a different uh, URL. So we'll send it to a different URL. The URL will be slash register. Okay, so we're gonna go to the register page. So localhost 8080 slash register. Okay, um, cool. But this page doesn't exist yet. So we need to create it. So in our templates over here, we have dashboard index and login. Well, we should also create the register.html page. Register.html. Okay, and uh, let's grab our you know, doc type, HTML, whatever, that sort of boilerplate stuff 
that comes with um, an HTML page. And we will, in here, the H2 will say is, you know, register uh, for an account or something. Just so we can see that we've, we've reached the registration page, right? Some sort of title that shows us that we're on the page. So, okay, cool. But there's one more, well, there's two more things that we need to do. One is we need to make sure that we map it inside of our, uh, inside of MVC, right? Model view controller. So just going to slash register. So if we go to, where was that that I was just typing uh, a login page? If we go to slash register, the URL, it's going to send a get request to our uh, server, to our Java server. And the Java server is going to say, okay, uh, or rather Spring is gonna say, okay, cool, we've received a get request. Are there any uh, controllers that take this registration endpoint or register endpoint and that points to um, a method at all? Where's the mapping? It's trying to map this endpoint to a method. Uh, that doesn't exist yet, we haven't created it. So it exists for slash login. So if we say localhost 8080 slash login, it says, oh, this is a get request for slash login, so let's execute this method. Okay, well the same thing needs to happen for the registration endpoint. We need to do a get mapping because it's going to be a get request. Anytime you type a URL into the, um, into the uh, address bar and say en and hit enter or go, um, that's what's happening, it's issuing a get request. So get on the register endpoint should execute this method. We'll call it register is the method that we're going to create. So it's going to return a string because this string is going to represent the HTML page. So we can say return register because register is going to be the HTML page that is rendered, which is right here. Okay, our server is going to reboot, but there's one more problem here. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, our functionality, this should work uh, except for the fact that we need to make one tweak to our security. Because if I say go to create account and click on it, it's it went to slash, you didn't see it, but it did go to the slash register endpoint. I wonder if you can see it in the logs to show that it actually went there. So if I click on create account, no, it doesn't show it in the logs. So it does try to go there, but it's stopping it and redirecting to the login page because um, we, it, it's being blocked. We haven't, we also need to set up our, um, our configuration for our spring security. Spring security is blocking us here. So we also need to go to security configuration and say, hey, uh, for the ant matcher slash register endpoint here, um, we wanna permit everyone. So everyone should be able to see the registration page. Okay, because if, if in order to log in, you need to register. And in order to register, you need to be able to get in there and see that page to create a login, right? So everyone should be able to see the registration page. Okay, so now if I say register and hit enter, now we can see register for an account. So that rendered, uh, you know, a whole bunch of stuff happened there, but it's all, it's all working, we see the page. Um, so that's great, right? So that's the process that you need to go through in order to, um, well, one, be able to open up any page for anyone to see it. And two, I gave you a very brief um, introduction to uh, jQuery and I gave you the, uh, the description around uh, when to you or why I'm using jQuery and why you should learn it. Um, but also the, the caveat that, hey, really I would suggest something like native JavaScript if you're creating a new application or um, uh, something like a, a framework, like a front end framework like React or uh, Vue.js or Angular, that kind of thing. Although, like I said, Angular is quite, quite large. Um, if you're just looking for a plain old front end type JavaScript framework, I think Vue is, is one of the best in terms of the, the balance that you get with it. Um, at some point, I'll need to create a Vue.js course. But anyway, there you go. That is uh, the beginning of our journey for creating uh, the registration page. So the next in the next lesson, uh, we'll dive further into this um, registration page and the HTML and be able to link it with the Java side so that when we actually type in information uh, to, to use to register for an account, it'll actually send it to the back end and insert that information into the database. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Happy learning and bye for now.